Welcome to Ackerman Recap. After the failure of the elite police force, Prime Minister Abe held an emergency meeting with high-ranking leaders. The Prime Minister believed that the individual known as Musashi was nothing more than an equal clone. He wanted to apprehend this man named Musashi as soon as possible. And to do so, they needed someone stronger. There was no one else but Yujiro for the job. Because Ogre was so notorious, involving him in this case would only complicate matters. So they needed someone else. There was a man who could take his place. His strength was immense and weapons were of no use against him. That man was Hanayama, a Yakuza boss. After a considerable effort to persuade him, Hanayama refused, stating that the gap between the police and the Yakuza was too vast for him to be of any help. Utsumi stood up, thinking that he had left, but no, he remembered his fellow officer who had just been split in half by Musashi. The feeling of despair when the military had tried various methods but couldn't even scratch Musashi. He knelt down and begged Hanayama one last time. Hanayama understood this feeling and helped him up, saying, A police general shouldn't do something like this. After learning Musashi's current location, Hanayama wasted no time and headed there as fast as possible. The Yakuza boss understood just how terrifying his adversary was this time. But once he had made up his mind, nothing could stop him. After a while, the two of them finally met. Hanayama takes off his shirt, revealing a powerful man tattooed on his back. Hanayama stared at an endless darkness behind the warrior in front of him, a mysterious shadow from which anything could emerge. Conversely, what the samurai saw in this young man was pure white. Nothing else, just pure white. Musashi was bewildered by the sight before him. Confronting a powerful swordsman, armed with nothing but a pure body without any form of defense, blinded Musashi, and he took a direct hit. Musashi tried to roll with the impact, but was unsuccessful. That colossal punch had rendered Musashi unconscious. Hanayama lifted the samurai up and asked, Can you keep going? Of course, you already know how Musashi responded. Hanayama unleashed that enormous punch once more. But surprisingly, in that fleeting moment, Musashi managed to use his sword to block the punch. It was thought that Hanayama's hand would be cut in half, but no, the immense grip of Hanayama held the sword firmly. Although he had blocked this punch, Musashi still suffered internal injuries, and he was surprised that his, his sword had been blocked. Without hesitation, Hanayama delivered a third punch, sending Musashi flying once again. The onlookers couldn't believe their eyes. Musashi quickly sat up, showing respect for his formidable opponent by assuming a Seiza sitting position. He looked at the powerful adversary before him and wanted to know his name. Hanayama was surprised and apologized for the punches he had just delivered. He then revealed his name. I don't hold any grudge against you, Musashi, but for honor's sake, I will fight you, Hanayama declared. After their conversation, the samurai had fully recovered. Hanayama had been waiting for this moment. He punches Musashi while sword sticks to his hand. The samurai used both hands to hold onto the sword. The image of Hanayama's hand being cut in half appeared, but it was merely Musashi's imagination. The sharp blade of the sword didn't budge, not even an inch. It seemed as though his opponent's flesh had turned into iron. Musashi quickly released his grip on the sword, simultaneously grabbing the remaining sword and making a lightning-fast cut into Hanayama's body. A diagonal cut appeared on Hanayama's back. Initially, the samurai intended to cut Hanayama completely, but Hanayama's back was too tough, and not a single bone was severed. Hanayama didn't know what to do with the sword in his hand and wanted to return it to Musashi. However, the swordsman said that Hanayama had taken it and couldn't give it back. He should consider it a gift. Hanayama withdrew the sword and forcefully threw it towards Musashi. The samurai caught the sword just before it came close to his eye. Still in that posture, Hana prepared to unleash another punch. Musashi recognized the terrifying potential of this punch and didn't want to get hit again, so he evaded it. He then swung his sword continuously at Hana's back, and Hana clenched his back muscles to withstand the strikes. Hurt, Hana said softly, but Musashi could still hear it. Musashi had never heard anyone talk about pain after being struck by him because they usually lost consciousness after being hit. Hana stepped closer to Musashi, and they clasped hands. He wanted to test his pure strength against his opponent. Hana began to exert his strength, surprising Musashi. With his other hand, Hana grabbed Musashi's face and pushed him to the ground. Hanayama's immense grip strength was crushing Musashi. That strength could easily crush Musashi's skull, but Hana refrained from doing so. 
At this moment, Musashi had cut into Hana's abdomen, causing him to release his grip due to the pain. It seemed like Hana's organs were exposed, but they were protected by the layer of fabric wrapped around his waist. This time, it was Musashi's turn to ask Hana, Can you continue? No one expected anything more, thinking the fight had concluded. However, Hana stood up and wanted to continue. At this moment, Baki appeared and encouraged Hana. Everyone continued to observe the battle. The legendary swordsman declared that he would use everything he had. Hana did the same, reverting to his old style. This time, Musashi didn't wait for his opponent to strike and immediately cut into Hana. Despite the intense pain, Hana continued to try and land punches. Musashi was deadly serious. He cut across Hana's face and took one of his eyes. Then, Musashi struck vertically into Hana's super-thick back. In total, Musashi had delivered ten strikes to Hana's body, but aside from the abdominal cut, none of them could penetrate Hana's body. He had used all his strength in those strikes. Hana sat down and looked at the inspector who had asked him to give it his all. He had tried his best, but it seemed that the promise of victory couldn't become a reality. Dr. Utsumi had been witnessing the entire battle from the beginning. He knelt down and thanked Hana for putting in such effort after just a few words of encouragement. Utsumi thanked Hana from the bottom of his heart. Musashi gazed intently at Hana's back, the part he couldn't penetrate. It resembled an iron fortress with Hana's bones and organs incredibly sturdy. From the start, Musashi concentrated his strikes solely on Hana's back, the toughest area on his body. He now aimed to cut vertically from the top down. Baki issued a dire warning to Musashi, stating that if he dared to draw his sword, he wouldn't leave this place alive. Baki seemed to anticipate the consequences if Hana were to be struck by that blow. Baki understood the condition of his friend and emphasized that the battle had come to an end. Musashi, however, denied it, refuting Baki's statement once again. Hana expressed his gratitude to his friend and asked if the standing man was still standing strong. Baki replied that he was indeed still standing strong. Upon hearing this, Hana collapsed. The inspector ordered the police force to rush Hana to the hospital as quickly as possible. The large pool of blood left behind after the battle was truly unbelievable. Baki then turned to Musashi and declared his intention to erase Musashi from this world. The video has come to an end. Please leave your comments in the comments section and don't forget to hit the subscribe button to stay updated with the latest videos from me. For now, goodbye and see you again, everyone.